give you a quick tour of my top 10 tips handout packet and go over the first two readings. This is, if you look in the file box, you'll get this whole version, which goes on and on and on for 44, 31 pages, I guess it is this time. But what we're looking at this time is this page where you're going to enter a discussion about two of the first handouts, ravenous reading and taking in-class tests. All of my top 10 tips are not me being some kind of genius, but just me writing down what all good readers and writers do. So this first line is important. Great writers must also be great readers. This is what we do in English 1A. So welcome to the game. Welcome to college reading and writing. And a lot of these are probably going to be familiar to you, but if not, give them a try. Like pre-reading is something that many students skip. And that means previewing titles and subtitles and table of contents, trying to get a, an overview of what you read before you plunge in. Of course, look for the main idea that the author is trying to get across, but don't forget to look for who the author is arguing with. This is super crucial with Mr. Marshall, our first big author for Don't Even Think About It, because students often get confused between what is Marshall saying and who is he arguing with. Often, hint, Marshall is arguing with world-renowned experts who in some degree he agrees with, but on very fundamental issues he disagrees with. So looking for who he's disagreeing with is almost more important than finding out what he's saying. Because you mix up the two, you're going to tell me that he's saying what his opponents are saying, and that's a little bit confused. Um, now, you have a test on Friday coming up. It's optional. There's a makeup test on week four. It's not worth a whole lot of your grade. So it really is something that you don't necessarily have to do well on the first time. But all my tests work the same way. There's one giant essay question, and um, you have, in the case of the online class, you have 48 hours to do this thing. So it's a time test, but it's 48 hours instead of 48 minutes. So this is a big advantage, I think, of, of the class that you're in right now. Um, a couple of the tips that I want to highlight here. First of all, read the question carefully. It's absolutely amazing how many students do not seem to read the question. And if you ask any professor who grades these essays, um, this is our first complaint. I can't give you an A if you don't answer the question that I asked. It's not fair to the other students. Even if it's an otherwise brilliant answer, you have to a answer the question that you were asked. As my math teacher used to say, oh, Scott, right answer, wrong question. But I didn't get A's for that either. Um, the other the other tip that is super important for me is to answer the whole question first. Now again, you've got 48 hours, not 48 minutes, but this is still survival writing. And by the way, I'm just expecting you to spend about an hour on this test. You can take more time if you want to, but my expectation level is that you're spending about an hour getting ready to write the test and writing the test. So I don't need a heading. I don't need an intro. I don't need a title or a subtitle. What I'm looking for when I pick up the paper from the very first sentence in the first paragraph is the answer to your whole question in a nutshell briefly. So I cannot overemphasize how important this number five is for success in my courses. And if you look at the sample essays, you'll see that's exactly what happens. Um, all of these are opinion questions, so it's really based on how well you present your answer, um, not so much on which side of the answer you come down on. Um, another way to do this is to come back up here and make sure that you brainstorm an outline before you begin. Now, especially with you online students, you've got tons of time. So please, please, please take time to brainstorm and make an outline. Look for your quotes. Look for your evidence. Think about what you're going to say first, second, third. Make triple sure that you're answering the whole question. And then when you start writing, it's always kind of amazing how much better you write when you know what you're writing about. Um, I just end by saying that proofreading does count. And once again, you have extra time. So please take time to proofread. You actually can get a very low grade on these papers, even with a brilliant answer, if you're not writing at a college level, because this is a college level course. So if you're one of these people like me, who needs extra time to proofread, please do take it. Okay, I hope that that was enough to get you started. 